Hi, this is Robert, and these are additional tests on the F6 power supply. I've got the uh, scope meter turned on there. Uh, this is on AC setting and uh, 10 millivolt per division scale. You can see there's a slight bit of ripple there, not too bad. I am loading it down pretty well. Uh, supplies went down to 23.1. And that's because if you look, I've got a pair of 100 ohm resistors in series on each supply. So we have uh, 200 ohms at 6 watts, which is just barely enough. Originally, I tried 100 ohms. Here's all our connections. And uh, I tried 100 ohms at... 3 watt and uh, they got rather brown smoked a little so I decided no but uh, anyway I've been checking temps on the uh, rectifier heat sinks and anything else I can think of and so far everything is staying pretty much room temp fairly cool except for of course the uh, poor little uh, load resistors they're a, a tad warm <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna let this sit for a while and make sure nothing smokes yeah, it's going up a little good I previously was checking out the left channel and it looked good. Uh, this is the right channel supply with a whole forest of leads coming out of it. You want to check all this stuff as much as you can, get it burned in as much as you can before you get it all stuffed into an amplifier. You know, once I start putting in the back panel and the heat sinks, I'm not going to have much service access. I'd rather something uh, act up now than uh, later. So far, everything seems to be pretty uh, stout and behaving itself. So this is the back panel assembly. As far as I'm going to complete it until the amplifiers together. So I have the uh, speaker terminals wired up. I have the switch, or actually the output of the fuse assembly going into the switch. There's still a line, neutral, and ground connection there. I already have the wires on the chassis set up for. They'll just plug right in there. Hopefully I made everything long enough. Since I've had a lot of pressure about it, this is how the balanced hookup would go. You have pins 1, Two and three. Three is on a balance. Three is always ground. Two is hot normally, and one is the low side, or I should say, positive phase, negative phase, ground. So the way I've got it hooked up, positive phase is right channel because it's closest. That's the only reason. Uh, negative phase is the left channel. I've only hooked up one ground line to it. You don't want to hook up two for fear of causing a big, uh, large ground loop around the amplifier. That can be really nasty if you have a transformer in the middle. So anyway, that's about it for this step. It is hard soldering the uh, speaker hookup, so you really have to hold the iron on there a long time, even if you have a nice hot one like I do. Let's mount us some MOSFETs. First, you notice I've got my uh, crappy anti-stat set up here, all nice and grounded. And one thing I did before was go through with some very fine, actually not all that fine, 180 grit sandpaper. Just smooth out the uh, heat sink a little. And what we're going to do is just put a little bit of the heat sink compound on there and again smear it around try and get a nice thin even coat Something like that should be all we need, at least for.
for this stage. Next step, our uh, sill pads. So they just uh, sit right there. compound on top notice this has a pretty uneven surface I really feel this will probably compress for the most part okay so here are MOSFETs for the F6. There are four, uh, what are these? The IRF 240s, I believe. IRF P 240s. And most of the time, all you have to do is give it a slight bend up here, like that, and you're good. Bend it up 90 degrees. For these uh, enormous uh, washers from the F5 kit, you recall I had to take them off to mount the uh, thermistors, more thermistors, or is, I forget what they were. I think they were thermistors because they were sensing temperature. So, got that one in. Should all be the same. IRF P240. Make sure it's going up at about 90 degrees. And then the angle. this one being so difficult. Damn. That's perfect. Can't get it to... Nope. It feels like it wants to cross thread. Fine, if it's going to be that way, make sure it's not going to cross thread. I may have gotten some grit from the sandpaper in there. So we'll make sure that it does thread up okay. And it does. It's one of the shorties that mount the board. So, if it's this screw, nope, there it goes. Put that there. These will probably end up getting moved a bit. Now, we set our wired up board on top, set it down, 
and due to the magic of DIY Audio Store, everything lines up. So we can now mount our board. this is all set up to where the uh, it's going to mount this way up so I have the screws for the potentiometers pointing up the MOSFETs point down that way they radiate out into the sink and up so they can utilize a uh, greater portion of the heat sink Apparently, if I mounted them on the top edge here with the board the other way, it wouldn't be quite as efficient. And so I've been told. So I also went through and uh, set the potentiometers back in the middle of the range. I'm currently using uh, 5.6 volt zeners, which I hope will give me the right adjustment range I need for these uh, MOSFETs. Looking at it with the board on here, I'm probably going to end up cutting an inch off of this coax cable in order, in order to get it to work. So, next thing, turn on the soldering iron, dig my solder out of the pile, and but I use quite a bit of alcohol and Q-tips, cotton swabs cleaning the uh, underside of the board and also the places where I soldered the heat sink. Make sure they're nice and clean. You can kind of see a spot there where the alcohol was. It might discolor the anodizing, I'm not sure. It's interesting. I'd like to know which uh, pass product uses all of these holes. I wonder if that's the Aleph amplifier. Anyway, it looks like the gate is there, so let's start on this side. This is probably the drain. Get some solder in there, feed it in. That looks good. Put a little solder on it to get it started. Start feeding it into the joint. That looks good. Ideally, I'd want it to mound up, but I think it's too large a hole around the MOSFET lead there to get it to uh, make a little cone like I'd like to see. Oh, that one did okay because it has a nice big land on top. And now that it's again you want to try and melt the solder on the joint, not on the iron. So 
see this solder puts out a lot of smoke and it's probably all flux but that's okay that's one of the reasons it flows so well so next i want to make sure that i don't have yeah there's some the solder is running down the uh, legs of the mosfets but it doesn't look like anything shorting together can't see it from that angle I think that will work out okay. dried flux scrape that off this still has a bit of alcohol on it so we can tidy that up make sure it looks good that doesn't look good to me so I'm gonna see if I can add more solder to it without Adding more to running down below. That looks okay. Okay, that's uh, one channel, left channel down, right channel to go. That should do it.